Hi guys, this is Juno and welcome back to another Summoner's War video. Today we have Siege and we saw that one of my Net5 defenses was doing well. And it's the Tessarion Tetra Tyranus defense and we're going to be talking about that today. So let's get into the video. So the reason I made the Tessarion, Tetra, and Tyrannus is because, first of all, yeah, first of all, I saw a lot of Tessarion in, in Siege defense, and second, I saw a lot of Molly in Siege defense. This defense is not Tessarion, Tetra, Tyrannus, it's usually Tessarion, Molly, Tyrannus, or Tessarion, Molly, Jingze, which is the Wind Monkey King. However, I tried using my Wind Monkey King, but look, seeing it not skilled up at all, it wasn't performing that well, so I just replaced it with my Tyrannus, which is fully skilled up. So this team is not a fast team, right? And you guys should know that by now, if you guys saw my past videos, you know it's a fast team if it has some kind of speed booster or, you know, like turn disruptor, disruptor like a Clara or a speed booster like an Orion. But we don't have any of that and all of these needs to be pretty, pretty tanky. So knowing that, who should go first? Well, I'm not entirely sure, and I think everybody will have a different opinion when ruining up a tanky defense that's not going first. But for me, I made the Tetra go first because it has a cleanse. So I know that I'm going second turn. There's a very good chance that the opponent will be faster than me and try to control my team. So I gave my Tetra a lot of resistance so that there's a chance that it doesn't get controlled and if it doesn't, it will cleanse whatever unit that is controlled. But it's not too much, it's at the 60% range because I am bringing in the Tessarion lead which has the 40%, 41% resistance lead. So my Tetra is going first, so I'm going to show you the runes again in turn order. So here is my Tetra. And um, I think yesterday or a few days back, I was in Childish's um, Discord channel. I go in there time to time, I see what people talk about, and for some reason they're talking about Molly, and they're talking about what a good Molly is. And people are saying a good Molly needs to be at least like plus 170 on Violet, with obviously 100% resistance. So I'm assuming that G3 guilds that have this Tessarion, Molly, Tyrannus, or Jingzei defense, the Molly is 170 speed, or 160, I don't know. They said. Putting it that way, it's the most effective because obviously it's fast, it's taking a lot of turns, it's healing all the time, and I understand that, but I just didn't have the room quality to do that after I ruined all my Nat 4 defenses and you know the one Nat 5 defense I showed you, which is the Sierra, Laura, and Perna. This was the best I could do. So Tetra is a little different from Molly, right? I mean she also heals every turn, but she heals based off her HP. Read it right here, she reduces the time of all harmful effects except in the inability effects granted on all allies by one turn. So she has like this um, AOE harmful effect reduction every turn. And she recovers the ally with the lowest HP status by 10% of your HP every turn. So it's not like Molly. I think Molly recovers 25% HP of the unit by their HP. Why? Well, it doesn't matter their HP, it's just 25% flat. Yeah, 25% of their HP. But for Tetra, it's her HP. And it's only 10%. With skill levels, I think it goes up to like 12 because I think it goes up by 20%. And I'm pretty sure that's multiplicative. So it goes up by 12%. But even with 40k HP or 43% 43k HP, I think that's only like 6,000. I looked at it, I tested this defense out. Every turn, she heals 6,000 HP. So which is not that great because Molly with 25% usually recovers like 12k, 10k HP per turn. But I mean, Tetra has that other, other perk, right? Reducing the time of all harmful effects. So that could kind of come into play. So even if the opponent gets a lucky, gets a lucky defense break or gets a lucky bomb, Tetra will well, I don't, know how, I don't know about bombs actually, but at least the defense break, if the Tetra takes two turns, then the defense break is gone. So that's that. Uh, she has this clen cleanse, air shield, which is the same as Molly. And then she has the same mana bubble skill. So there is a benefit by giving her a lot of accuracy, but 
I just didn't have the runes to do that. These are these are her runes. It's not that bad. This could be grinded more, so she could get more stats, which is great. And this also could be grinded. So overall, she could be a little better. These are the artifacts. I got this juicy skill 3 recovery plus 15%. I know that the G3 players have skill 3 plus skill 3 recovery plus 20, 25%. I don't know, 20% at least on those on those mollies. So it's really, really toxic. But this is the best that I could do for mine. And then also another HP artifact that takes less damage from wind. <coughs> wind, light, and dark. Okay, so that's Molly. I mean, <laughs> sorry, that's not Molly, that's Tetra. And then the second turn is the Tessarion. So my Tessarion isn't that great, actually. It only has like 30k HP. Some attack, some defense. Kind of low on the accuracy. But I, met, I made sure that I got the 100% rest with the lead. And it was decently fast, so it goes right after the Tetra. You can see that it's not fully scaled up, but I am in the process of getting um, efforts. That's why I still used him in the defense. And he's on fine and energy. So these are the runes. Really, my runes start to really fall off in this defense. But this is the best I could do for now. And this is the artifacts. So skill to accuracy, because I am lacking accuracy, only 35%. Crit damage received, minus 4%, because his passive allows him to take less damage if the opponent has no harmful effects on them. So that's good. He has that, that damage mitigation. And with this, he gets negative 4% less damage from crit damage. And then this, again, more survivability, HP main stat, damage received from water, damage received from light, damage received from fire, all these survivability artifacts. Because I think for tanky teams like this, it's to bring in damage, but also it needs to survive. It needs to survive. That's why I did that. Finally, the last turn is Tyrannus, and I specifically made Tyrannus go last because there's a chance that the Tessarion could land a defense break, so the Tyrannus could land in that big hit. Again, I made sure that he had 60% resistance so that I could land that 100% resistance. His accuracy is a little low, so he might not get those provokes, but he has the speed, he has the defense, and he has the HP. So these are, just, these are the runes. I could grind more speed here. Grind speed here. Everything else I can't grind, so this is a very low efficient rune. Good rune here. Okay, rune here, not that great. And then finally this rune. His artifacts are all this. Um, HP main stat, additional damage, HP when revived because Tyrannus doesn't revive with full HP, so that kind of helps, but not that great. People don't really go for this, they go for something else. And then here, Damage received from fire minus seven percent, and damage received from my light minus six, and the de defense to increase in effect plus six percent because Tyrannus has that self buff, th has that self defense buff. So yeah, the point of this team is to survive, and take many turns because they are invalid. The Tyrannus puts on not the Tyrannus, the, the Tessarion puts on that oblivion defense breaks, and uh, Tyrannus follows up with his own big shot on those units that are defense broken. And the Tetra is constantly bringing in that heal with this passive and the cleanse. So yeah, you could always replace the Tetra with Molly if you do. Very lucky to have her. I don't know if he's gonna get nerfed. I hope she does because it's really toxic to see her all the time in G3 Arena. I am, I am in G3 Arena right now. It's only a Thursday, but I'm constantly in G3. But people do hit me back, I do fall, and I just climb back up. But I meet a lot, a lot of mollies, and they are very toxic, very, very toxic. So it would be great to not see them anymore. <laughs> That's my personal experience. But obviously, if I had a molly, I wouldn't be saying this, because I would be using her as an advantage myself, putting her in my arena defense, so I can't really complain. It's just like that I don't have her. But yeah, you could uh, replace the Tetra with Molly, and you could replace the Tyrant as a Wind Monkey King. I think the Wind Monkey King is just as toxic if you fully skill him up. If you give him a good destroy set, a good balance set, he and pretty fast, then he turn cycles like a monster. On defense, that guy procs like a god. With his, you know, skill 2 that's giving him 50% more attack bar, 
and with the skill one that's constantly constantly stunning and you know if you attack other units he has that passive to counterattack very very annoying unit so if he just performs correctly he could do the job as well but yeah guys thank you for watching that was it for this defense let's see how well how more this defense does currently in this league is standing at 5-2 and the 2 was from the past 2 siege defenses i mean the siege past 2 siege battles and it was against really hard guilds so i understand why it lost but in g1 it's doing pretty well so i'm really looking forward to how it will continue how it will do by the end of the siege season so let's see how it does and hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have these units i mean you guys should have Tessaran and Tetra, right? He's, he's a free nat 5 and a free nat 4. I uh, hope that you guys can make a similar team because it is working well. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please give me a like. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing because you can see all these videos and it, it helps me out a lot. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.